me tell you something that is hard for men, most men, to say the words, I don't know. <laughs> we always want to try to come up with something, you know, to show we're smart and everything else. There we go. Is that better, John? We always want to try to come up with something to say, even when we don't know what we're talking about. But just to say the words, I don't know, has been a long trip for me. God's finally worked on me long enough to where I've got to the point I can say, I don't know. Well, today is going to be a sermon on, I don't know. <laughs> and what we're going to be talking about is James. James is a figure in the Bible, part of our disciple series, series, that James was part of the twelve, but when you say James, you may be talking one of two or one of three people. Now, in this case, we're talking about James the Less. We're not talking about the son of Boanerges. We've already talked about him. John and James. This one's James the Less. And the word James the Less, we don't know what that less means. We don't know if that means the lesser of the James or the lesser of Jesus. It can mean younger, smaller. That less can mean a lot of things. So as we look at this, we see the 12 disciples and we see James, the son of Alphaeus, the less or the just. So the first person we're looking at here, and we're going to look at two pictures right quick, quick. James, the son of Alphaeus, James the less. Okay? In or, go to the next one, James the just, the brother of Jesus. There has been controversy since 100 A.D., of which James is James is speaking of. And that's why my next slide, I say, I don't know. I don't know which one of the Jameses this is. But we're going to talk about both. And you know what? The Lord knows. So we're going to talk about both of them. And then you're in your own private study you're going to have to figure out in your heart which one this is talking about. Go to the next one for me. Okay, as you can see from our chart up here, there's two ways that this James can be. In Jesus' family, his brothers, it names James. But that particular James is James the Just. On the other side, because it says... His father was Alphaeus and his mother was Mary. It could be this Mary and brothers and his brother was Matthew, which we just spoke about. Was Matthew the Levi, the publican? And he could be the brother of Matthew, James the Less. So as we go through this, you're just going to have to let the Lord touch your heart and figure on this which part of the family he is talking about. Matthew 9, 9 through 13. And now the names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter. Isn't that always funny how he says, and first. First, the top, the most, you know, the most, I don't know if it's because he was the loudest, or he was the one the Lord spoke to the most, or he's the one that stayed in the most trouble. We don't know why Simon was always called the first. But Simon, Paul Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labinius, whose surname is Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Now as we're looking at this, it's funny, if it was really Matthew's brother, why didn't they put Matthew yeah. and James together? Just a side note there. 
Because he put the other brothers together. So if this is Matthew's brother, why isn't he listed with Matthew? So that would cause you to lean to the side that this is James the Just, the Lord's brother. There's other scriptures in there, and the way they put it, you can push it the other way. Go to the next slide. For me. Who was James, the son of Alphaeus? So let's look at some tradition, because we have no more scripture. There's four more scriptures that list it, but guess what? It all says the same thing in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the places they talk about it. They either say James the less, or they say James son of Alphaeus. And that's the only mention in the Bible about this man. James, the son of Alphaeus, is traditionally identified as James the Less, James the brother of Jesus. If these references are all references to the same James, that would make James, son of Alphaeus, the author of the book of James. That makes him a very important person, doesn't it? Now he's all of a sudden the Lord's brother, the, the author of the book of James. And one of the three Paul called the pillars of the church because he became the pastor of the church of Jerusalem. Some have argued that he is the apostle Matthew's brother. Okay, in Mark 15, 40 and 41. There were also women looking for far off among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Last, and Joseph, and Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him from Jerusalem. Now, here's a funny thing. Do you think Mother Mary was not at the crucifixion? Everything I've ever seen or heard or tradition or anything else all shows Mary there at the crucifixion but they're listing Mary's and the only Mary that we don't know how to identify because we know who Mary Magdalene is that's not Mother Mary so the only other person here is speaking about is Mary the mother of James the last that would say that's the Lord's mother and James is the brother of Jesus Now, we go into James. Let's, we're going to stay on James and about Theus, James the Less for a moment here. And the next slide you're going to see here is Egypt and Iran. When we start talking about this particular James, history doesn't even give us a clear picture of where the guy went to his ministry. Because there's two different ideas. And each, here's funny, and there's a church in each place in honor of him being there and dying there. So everybody wants to claim this James. Since nobody really knows, everybody wants to claim him. So James, the son of Alphaeus, Phineas, finished his course. Tradition implies that it was James the Less who may have taken the gospel to Persia. When you say Persia, you're talking about current day Iran. Okay? That was Persia. Okay, and was martyred there. However, another tradition claims that James of Alphaeus, son of Alphaeus, preached in Egypt, and it said he was crucified in the city, and I'm not going to attempt that. That's one of those, uh, one of those things that, that pushed your tongue. But the disagreement is even where this James Celeste went and preached and died. You see, you can't bank on tradition and history. You know the only thing we can bank on? What does the scripture say? Yes. That's what we can bank on. So we know a few things about him, but not a whole lot. Now, we're going to stop there and say, if this is James the last, and he's not the Lord's brother, him being in obscurity is not a bad thing. There are great Christians who are born, serve the church all their life with all their heart, 
and pass away that you will never read of anywhere. But are they no less important than the Billy Grahams of the world? Not in God's eyes. Faith is faith. Faith is faith. When you get to heaven, you'll still get your crown. It doesn't matter what your status is here on earth. It doesn't matter what God put in your heart to do. I'm going to tell you, there was a sweet lady when I was a child, and she was the Sunday school teacher for the wild ones. You know, the ones under five years old. Okay? And that woman, all her life, took care of those little kids. I'm telling you something, folks. She has an honored place in heaven. She never went on a mission trip. She never put on an evangelistic event. But God honors her for her work for Him and her love and her devotion and her patience. But wait a minute. Aren't I talking about right now the fruits of the Spirit that she displayed every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday in that little room with all those kids running around? Yes, God honors her. We don't have to be the superstar. We don't have to be Peter. Or let's talk about the next James. So the next James in the next picture here, John, shows the Fuller's Club. Now this is kind of what James is known for. In this picture is a scene. It's an ancient scene. And in this scene, there are four scenes. Here is the Pharisees convincing John that he needs to speak to the people. You see, this was a dirty trick. John, you need to speak to the people because people are torn between following us, the Pharisees, and the way we teach, and this Jesus thing. So why don't you go up and get on top of the temple up there where you can preach to all the people and, and, and let's get this thing settled. James the Just, and that's what he's called, did exactly what they did, they took, asked him to do, but when he got up there, one of the Pharisees pushed him off the temple. And he hit the ground. Now here's the problem. He didn't die when he hit the ground. Women, do you remember back, way back, um, your grandmother or great-grandmother talking about washing clothes before they had washing machines? They used to have a thing they called, women called a battling axe. And they'd take a big tub and they'd put all the clothes in it and they'd have this club looking thing and they'd sit there and they'd hit the clothes down in the washing tub. Okay? In ancient times, that was called a fuller's club. So let's read down here what it says. The martyr of James suggests the leader of the church of Jerusalem. Aggressivus, I can't say his name right, cites that the scribes and the Pharisees placed James upon the pinnacle of the temple and threw him down, threw down the just man. And they began to stone him, for he was not killed by the fall. And one of them who was a fuller, that is a laundryman, took a club which he beat out the clothes and he struck the just man in the head. Okay? Now, shortly after this, Jerusalem fell. Now, I'm not making a connection between them killing James the Just, the Lord's brother, and the fall of Jerusalem. But let's just say on the outside, there may be some kind of connection there. I don't think that the Lord was happy if that, with the way they treated his brother. So let's go back to I don't know. James, the son of Alphaeus, James the Less, and James the Just, the brother of Jesus. I don't know which James they're talking about here. But in a way, it doesn't really matter. Because either way, this was God's 
doing in his people. If it was two separate people, that's fine. If it was one or the other, that's fine. It doesn't matter. God had a plan for both ways and for both people, whichever it was. He used both of them. So if we're speaking of James, the son of Alphaeus, as James alleged, he is a quiet figure who serves Jesus quietly and is martyred in relative obscurity. Quietly disappears out of the pages of history. Did his job quietly without making a bunch of noise and he slips out of history unseen. If we're speaking of James, the son of Alphaeus, as in James the just, the brother of Jesus, he goes on to leave the church of Jerusalem and writes the book of James. His martyrdom is well known and greatly recorded. Both will have an equal throne with Jesus like the rest of the twelve. You see, there's going to come a day when it's all going to be over. And we're going to be in heaven. And Jesus will be there on His throne. And in front of Him will be twelve thrones. With the twelve disciples sitting on those thrones. Judging the nations. And it doesn't matter whether James is sitting in this chair or that chair. He's going to be there. God loves all of us. He doesn't make difference. He gives us all gifts. He gives us all the Holy Ghost. And He gives us all something to do. The only choice that we have one way or another is are we going to do what God has equipped it and put us in the position to do the things He wants us to do. And He's not going to look down on you if you're not that person standing in front of the church. Maybe you're the one that cuts the grass and maybe you're the, you're, you're the one that, that, that helps with the, the school children. Maybe you're the one in the kitchen doing the cooking. You serve God the way you're supposed to. He's gifted you to. But here's the thing. You need to serve. He did give you, gift you. He did give you the Holy Spirit. He did do the things that He needed to do to make sure that you're ready for the position here on earth. Why? He's preparing you for your position in heaven. You need to be about the Lord's work, whatever that work is, with the right heart. You say, well, I'm just a school teacher. What does that have to do with the church and the, and the work of the church? Folks, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're okay. I don't care if you're a welder or a doctor or what you are. God has equipped you to touch people in His name. And through the way you live, one of the special people in my life was a doctor. I was operating on, Peggy was operating on on, on by him. But what was special is I'm fixing to go on there. They're rolling the robot into the operating room that I'm fixing to be operated on with this guy running the robot. But before we went in there, he came up to me and he grabbed my hand and said, Bill, let's pray. Folks, is there any doubt in your mind where that doctor's heart is? His first concern was for my soul, not just the fact that I needed to have my appendix taken out. It didn't matter what his occupation are. We can all live for the Lord, regardless of what it is that you do in life. You can live for the Lord. Your way you live your life, the way you present yourself, makes a statement either for or against Jesus Christ. And that's what's important to God. So that's what I'm asking you to look at right now. Make sure that regardless of what you're doing, you're doing it for the Lord. Father, thank you for the time that you've given us, and thank you for this message. Father, thank you that you are in our lives. 
and you care about us, and you do things for us, and you prepare us. You see, God equips the call. He doesn't call the equipped. First, there has to be the heart. The heart of a servant that's willing to say, Father, I don't know if I can do this, but I'll give it a shot. And then He will give you what you need to be able to do what He wants you to do. But He cares more about the heart than the hands. Father, thank You that this church is full of people who love You. Who pray to You. Thank You that we're known as a church that prays. But they pray to you and pray for people. And when there's a call out, I don't care what the call out is for, but when there is a need, there are people in this church that will step up and meet that need. Now, now we have to do it in a very safe way, but they're still willing to be there for you and show God's love to hurting people all over this community. So I thank you for this church. Father, as we go into this time, if there's one here that has a need, if the one here that, that you've touched their heart, the altar's open to you. If you need to speak to me, I'll put on a little mask and we'll be after the service. But we're here for you. Whether you're at home right now, or if you're at home and you feel a need, God's touching your heart. You know you're supposed to be serving in some way. Pick up the phone and call me. You call me. Father, I need you to give this church peace. Whether they're here at home, give them peace over this whole COVID-19 thing. That you're still in charge. This is still your church. You're still part of His people. And He loves you and He cares about you. And He will handle this. And we need to relax and do what He wants us to do. So Father, in all this, we ask the name of Jesus Christ. We, we ask the Holy Spirit to continue to fill this church. In Jesus Christ. Congregation, let's stand up and sing our final song.